Welcome to the next video in the CTT tutorial series. In this video, we're going to look at testing a server. In this video, we will describe how server testing works. We will show you how to create a CTT project and, and what's included in a project. Then we'll talk about profiles and conformance units and the relationship between the two. We'll demonstrate some testing quick testing versus full-on testing. We'll look at saving your test history, debugging test scripts, testing your server for resource efficiency, and then we'll look at some other videos that may be of interest. The CTT can be used to test a server for compliance. All of the test scripts are written in JavaScript. You can see them, you can open them, you can review them, uh, they're completely open. We have well over a thousand scripts and we're adding more. The way this works is once you've configured the CTT, you'll basically tell it to connect to the server and then run all of the tests that you've selected and you'll sit there and wait for those tests to complete and then you can review the results. The tests that are conducted include tests that are test to pass so where we're looking for a very specific behavior and it matches our expectations. Likewise, with the tests to fail, we can set up situations where the requests are invalid or where the intended behavior doesn't make sense. And we can observe the CTT's, the server's response to make sure that it, it, it abides by the specifications and matches our expectations. And lastly, CTT server testing can be automated as part of your CI system. And we do have another video that describes how to accomplish this. So what does it mean when we talk about tests to pass? So the CTT will send specific instructions to the server because it's expecting certain behaviors. Perhaps we're doing a read or a write or setting up a subscription. And then when the server responds, the CTT is checking those responses to make sure they match the expectations that it's programmed with. And these type of tests occur for all UA behavior, reading, writing, subscriptions, browsing, and events, etc. With tests to fail, it's the exact same thing. The CTT will send specific types of messages to the server that may be incomplete, invalid, contain errors, or setting up situations that simply shouldn't be allowed. As the server responds, the CTT is checking those responses to make sure they meet its expectations. So let's take a look at how to create a CTT project. We'll open the CTT, we'll click New Project from the File menu. The project type is a server test. We'll give it a name and we'll specify a location and then we'll click the OK button. And at this point, a lot of files are being copied to this new location, so this may take a few seconds. But once it's done, you'll see the CTT screen and then you're ready to move on. Let's take a look at what's actually inside the project directory. So we're in a command prompt and we'll see there's three folders, library, main tree, and PKI. There's also some files and these files are XML based and contain project configuration and other settings that will be important to the CTT, like the profiles and conformance units that you see. Let's take a look in the library and you'll see there's some subdirectories. These contain scripts that are used, reusable code for our test scripts, which are in the main tree. If we look in the main tree, just look at the subfolders. Each of those subfolders is a conformance unit. There's a lot. Within each of those conformance units, there are JavaScript test script files. And here you'll see there's about 1400 of them. In the PKI folder, there's a lot of OpenSSL or X509 certificates that are used in various tests. Now that the project is created, let's take a look at how to configure the project. 
So we go into the settings window. And the first thing you need to do is to specify the endpoint of the server that you're going to connect to. So you can type it in or paste it. There's a lot of other settings as well, such as capabilities. But as you click on a setting, at the very bottom, you'll see a description of what that setting is and how to configure it. You'll need to specify the secure channel settings. You can do secure, you can do insecure. You'll also specify how you authenticate in the session. If you want anonymous username, password, or a certificate based login. And then the most important part is the, the node ID configuration for the nodes that will be tested. So here you can see there's a lot of settings already configured. And as you click on a setting again, the description is shown at the bottom. We can use the integrated node ID browser. So on the right hand side, we can navigate through the address space of the server, find a node, drag and drop it into the setting. And that wasn't too clear. So let's clear out some of the other settings and we'll do that again. So let's scroll down. We can see bytes, we'll drag and drop that. We'll do byte string and also the date time. But note also on the right hand side, the attributes. So we can see the attributes of the currently selected node. And also you can see the references, the forward and the inverse references. There's many other settings that you'll need to configure as well. These are all described in the documentation. And again, you can click on any setting and review the notes at the bottom. And when you're done, just click OK. Let's now take a look at the profiles, conformance units, facets that are in the CTT. So here we've got the profiles widget and the conformance units widget. We'll arrange those so we can see both at the same time because they do interact with each other in real time. So working in the profiles widget, we can see the standard UA server. And as we expand it, we can see conformance units, facets, and sub profiles that are below it. You can see that conformance unit for monitor basic. If we go look at the conformance units tab, we can see monitor basic is selected along with all of the scripts below it. If we deselect it, it's also deselected in the profiles. As you select a more higher range uh, facet or profile, you'll see more and more conformance units and tests that will be selected. Once you select the standard UA server, which is the top of the chain in this case, you'll see there's a lot of scripts that have been selected for testing. You can save the state of those checkboxes as well. So for example, if during your testing you find there's some scripts that you need to, to exclude, you can exclude them. Or if there's additional tests you'd like to include, you can go and check those boxes and then save that information to a file that you can then later load to expedite configuration. So let's take a look at testing. First of all, we'll do a very quick test and then we'll do a more thorough test. So the quick test. In this case, we'll just simply open a script, for example, the very first script in read. So we double click it, we view the code. We can see that this is reading an item. So we'll click the button to start the current script and it's done. It's very quick. So as we open the script output, we can see the output from that script. That's a quick test. A more thorough test we can select, for example, an entire conformance unit. Now we can see there's probably 40 or 50 scripts that have been selected. So this time we select the start debug run button, sit back, wait, and at the bottom in the log, we can see, uh-oh, we have a red icon. So something failed. As we scroll down the list, we can see a lot of green. Green is good, green is pass. We see a a test here that was skipped and the message tells us why. And then we find the error. And we can see here that we received a bad data encoding unsupported, but we expected bad data encoding invalid. So this is a non-compliant behavior. So as you select the standard UA server or any other profile, more and more tests will be selected. And the amount of time it takes to run that test will obviously increase as well.
So when you do test runs, compliance test runs, you may want to save that history. So simply click on the save all button and then the log will get converted to XML, which you can then open in any ASCII text reader. This XML output file of the results can be very useful, especially in a CI system where you may use this file as a form of decision making. For example, you might say, if any failures are detected, then halt the build process and send somebody an email notification. Or if you're expecting some failures, you might say, uh, halt the build process when the number of failures exceeds five tests or exceeds 10% of the tests. And we have information in the CTT help documentation that describes how you can accomplish that within the Jenkins CI system. If you're having problems with a particular test, then you can actually debug it. So let's take a look. We'll open a test script, and then we're going to run it in the debugger. So we click the Start Current Script in Debugger button. A very powerful integrated debugger will open. We can see the loaded scripts and the breakpoints on the left. And on the right, we can see the call stack and the watch window. There's other views at the bottom also. So in the script window, we can do the typical step in, step out, step over, run to cursor, etc. As we step in, we're now looking at the read helper object, which is in the script library. Line 104 does the actual read, but we'll jump to line 105. So at this point, we've accomplished the read. But in the watch window, we can see the current status of variables in, in the current scope. We can jump around the call stack and see where we came from. We can also go to the bottom in the console window and type in some commands to query values. So args.maxa equals 100,000, which is what we saw in the other side. And then we can simply step out and then run to completion. Debugging is powerful and can be very, very helpful. There are also resource efficiency tests that are provided with the CTT as well. You'll find them in the script library. These can be helpful for doing repetitive tasks. For example, I want to do a read 500 times or 500,000 times. When you do this type of test, it's helpful to combine it with a profiler, maybe Windows Performance Monitor, for example. So you can measure CPU usage, memory growth, handle count, thread count, etc. Uh, this is a manual process. It's something that you will need to, to run from the CTT. If you're doing a read test of a half a million uh, cycles, then obviously you only need to start the test. You don't need to sit there and wait for it to complete. Uh, but we do have a document online, uh, the link at the bottom there. That describes how we do resource efficiency testing in the certification test lab and we encourage you to take a look at that document and to incorporate that information as part of your QA system. Other videos of interest may include uh, script development if you need to enhance the CTT to do more specific tests for your product. Uh, advanced debugging can be very helpful if you have a client that's connected to your server and there's interoperability problems, put a CTT in the middle and you'll be, you will be able to see all of the calls going back and forth, including all of the parameters in each of those calls. And then lastly, the automation, where you can make compliance testing automatic as part of your overnight build system. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. There's a lot of information in here and we encourage you to contact us with any questions. There are other videos that we hope you will take a look at, and if there's anything else we can do, let us know.